good answer and clearly some unintended consequences that this is why this bill not should be passed. Materia Ture. Oh, good Lord. I'm so glad that's over. No, it's just the deal, <laughs> Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. So uh, it's a, it, it really is a bit rich listening to that member lecture this House on the regulations on housing standards. I mean, this government, of which he is a part, has had nine years to enforce exactly those regulations. Nine years to put standards around those regulations so people know what it is that they have to do in order to meet them. Nine years to enforce those regulations so we don't have, what, 600,000 homes in this country now still uninsulated, still damp, still causing their family sickness. I mean, this stand here, and it's Puttle Williams, sir. It is Puttle Williams. It's not that hard to say. So I, I'm... We have had this debate in this House about housing standards for years and years. Right. Last year, we had that ridiculous bill from Nick Smith, who also decided to stand up here and lecture us all about it, <coughs> um, and a bill that put in place uh, fire alarms. That's fine. And a 1978 standard of home insulation for rent. 1978. I was eight years old in 1978. You say I'm that old. No. <laughs> 1978 standard of home insulation for uh, homes that, that families are having to live in in 2017. I mean, it was an utter, utter disgrace. And at the time that uh, Nick Smith's bill was going through select committee, we had submission after submission from those involved in health, with, with those involved in child advocacy saying this is wrong. This bill is wrong because it will not save these children's lives. And the Children's Commissioner came to that select committee and he said that Nick Smith's 1978 standard was a broken promise to New Zealand's children. A broken promise to New Zealand's children. The government had said that they would set the standards so that children's lives would not only be saved, but that all children would have a decent healthy standard of living in these rental homes, and Government National broke that promise. Well, I'm here to support Andrew Little's bill because Andrew Little's bill restores some faith to the promise that New Zealand homes can be and should be insulated to a standard that protects those children, that stops them from getting so sick that there are 40,000 hospitalisations every year, Over. that protects those up to 15 children who will die every year because the homes that they live in are cold and damp and make them sick one time too many. That is what the Children's Commission has told to us at the time that Nick Smith's bill was, being, uh, was going through select committee, that up to 15 children a year die because of illnesses that are caused by cold, damp homes. So we know, and uh, my colleague Ruth, Ruth Dyson has clearly articulated this as well this evening, how critical it is to every single family in this country that they have a home that is warm and dry and safe. And I'm very pleased that we are supporting Andrew Little's bill because it goes a long way towards putting in those standards to make that possible. I would also note uh, from this member who's just spoke before me, when he was talking about those regulations um, and why they were not so necessary. One of the biggest issues that was raised at Select Committee on Andrew Little's bill was the fact that they were unable to enforce the existing regulations, that they couldn't enforce them because, they, because access to the tenancy tribunal was too difficult, their access to the information about what the standards were and whether or not they were met was too difficult, and for fear that raising any issue around the standard of their housing would lead to them being evicted, and they have no legal protection. Let's not remember, a tenant has zero legal protection if they complain to a landlord, because the landlord can make up a reason for kicking them out and kick them out. And they may be able to, they may try to take a case at the tribunal, but that doesn't mean that they've got anywhere to live. So these tenants are simply unable to enforce even the, the poor standards that are being put in place. And that is, a, that is an issue that this government has known about now for a decade nearly and has still refused to do anything about it. So don't stand here and lecture us about those standards. We actually need real law that makes it very clear to landlords what their obligations are 
That means that the standards that are set are set at a 2017 standard, not a 1978 one. That the regulations are clear about how those standards can be tested to ensure that they are met, and that there is good enforcement. Yeah. So, and protected rights for tenants so that they are able to enforce those rights even in a market where renting is very expensive and demand is high. So there's, it's absolutely critical that this bill proceeds because families' health and children's lives are dependent on it. And so while we have talked in political terms about housing in this House, and we do so nearly every day, and that is part of the political discourse and the argument we have here. There are times when we need to just focus on what's important. And what is important is that kids are living in homes that make them sick and sometimes lead some to die. And we can fix that. We can help fix that tonight by getting this bill through to the next stage. And I would strongly urge members to think first about those families and their kids. Thank you, Mr Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Simon O'Connor. Uh, I was, uh, well.